Now let's talk about a more modern example of a uh, transition metal complex, and that uh, or a new, uh, involving a newly or more recently discovered ligand called ferrocene. Ferrocene is pictured here on this page, and on this page you'll see ferrocene is going to be a bidentate ligand. because it's going to have two bonds to uh, iron in particular. Uh, I have to check that and see if there's been other complexes. I know certainly uh, this was discovered uh, with iron. And if I go to Wikipedia and I see ferrocene is an organometallic compound with this formula, it was discovered uh, I don't think I can circle this, but in the late 40s, it says on this page, and then rediscovered in 1950. So uh, let's call that modern as far as many chemistry things in the quantum uh, time period. Uh, and it's principally with iron, although, again, so I, I would imagine researchers still going down on this. Uh, but let's go ahead. We have, oh, and so this is one ligand. And it's got uh, two cyclopentadienyl groups. And there are different configurations with different geometries here. But we're going to focus on um, just the one where it is uh, staggered. So that's going to be this one here. You'll see the points of the cyclopentadienyl rings are uh, opposite each other, although it doesn't really matter. And what we can see here, uh, at least generally, is that if we wanted to think about how the d orbitals, uh, d orbitals, uh, are, uh, spaced with regards to the, with the ferrocene, uh, so that we can determine the crystal field splitting or the order of the orbitals. We can look at a picture like this and see these two have orbitals uh, like this, which are the dx squared minus y squared and the dxy. These ones are going to be farthest from the ligand. And then these ones right here, uh, the other ones, dz squared and dxz dyz. Those are harder to see um, for me personally. Uh, so, uh, but I, what I did investigate is that uh, the dz squared is the closest, and these one, the dxz are in the middle. These two. And so, what we can come up with from this, and this is always what we're trying to do. We're trying to extend our knowledge based on knowledge that we have is if we can look at these pictures and do some research, we would find out that the ones that are farthest from the ligand are lowest energy. So see if this fits down here, these are gonna be my dx squared minus y squared and dxy. Then there's gonna be one, uh, oh, two. Let me see, do I have this right? Oh no, I have these backwards, that's the problem. I was like, wait a minute. I said they were hard to determine, but so that's true. Turns out that uh, this is the middle, and these are the closest. And so my next level is going to be dz squared. And then above that is going to be dxz and dyz. Those are going to be the highest energy because they are closest to the uh, closest to the ligand. And so we can come up with our own orbital layout based on new geometries, which is pretty cool.